Hello, this is Jared. Welcome to my Windows tune-up video. There's many tune-up softwares that are available out there, but I don't really use any of them. I like to do it manually. It really is the best way. Some tune-up softwares, uh, in honesty, you know, invite problems of their own, or they're trying to sell you something themselves, or they're trying to stay resident the entire time and monitor your system and try and keep you safe. But in honesty, the more armor and other things you put on, the more things are running on your system and the slower it's going to be. So I really don't like to pile anything onto the system at all, uh, other than one level of protection. I use Microsoft Security Essentials, or with Windows 8, they've now revived the namesake of Windows Defender, and that's what I use. So this is my Windows 8 host machine here. And I have two virtual machines we're going to be demonstrating from for older versions. So this is going to apply to all versions, XP through Windows 8. There's two directions you're going to use to try and remove nasty stuff. Now, I put a little bit of nasty stuff on this machine. I'll bring open Internet Explorer here and show you that I've infested it with lots of toolbars. Toolbars. You know, a lot of respect for Google, but I really hate all toolbars all of them. They suck up part of your screen space so now your only viewable area of the web page keeps becoming diminished by the amount of these things that come onto your system. And they're all trying to monetize in a way. Watching what you click on, cataloging you, changing your home page and putting up ads, and then when you type in any old thing and even into the address line, it will go ahead and point them at themselves to do the search for you so they're generating traffic so they can catalog you know people and sell that for some potential profit so I, I really don't like any toolbar so we'll go to tools here on IE8 and go to manage add-ons and I'll show you some of this infestation here you can go into this and manually turn things off and on by highlighting something like AOL toolbar you can hit disable but there is a quick way to get rid of all of these at once also, on search providers, you'll find that that other situation, that not only is it a toolbar, but it also puts in itself as the dominant search one. And the last toolbar I installed was this one, so it's the default search provider. So if I type in www.whatever.com, it's going to go here to figure out what that is, instead of maybe Google if I wanted. So they get into there too. We'll close out of there, and I'll show you the one swift way to go ahead and disable all of those and set you back to normal really, really quick. You go to Tools, or the gear symbol, Internet Options, and on the Advanced tab, you'll find a button at the bottom right, Reset Internet Explorer Settings, back to the default conditions, kind of like a factory default for Internet Explorer. We'll hit that. Delete personal settings. What that'll do is delete everything, including potentially stored usernames and passwords, which I don't recommend storing usernames and passwords in browsers. It's, it's a security threat to yourself, in honesty. Uh, so hit that. Everything gets flushed. And it'll go through and clear all these categories. You get green check marks. And then when this is finally done it will want us to restart Internet Explorer. So I'll close this. It says you should really restart it. Hit OK. We'll close this and we'll reopen it and Internet Explorer will have a problem at first. Now that's nice. <laughs> but there's no toolbars and that little error might be because of the infestation and it's going to do the out-of-the-box experience here where it's saying welcome to Internet Explorer 8 for the very first time and you've never used me. So we'll hit next. I typically hit, no, I don't want to suggest sites for me. Use the express settings for the rest. These are just my defaults. They aren't necessarily what you should always do. Then it opened up on a new tab here. Thank you for using IE for the first time. So we'll close that one. It's a little pokey the first time. Okay, so we'll slow the first time. We'll close and reopen that browser. And now it pops up quick without the error. And right up there, no toolbar mess. Does that mean the mess of those toolbars is completely removed from our system? No. Is there a chance they might come back? Yes. So now we'll talk about some other things you can do. There's the two avenues I referred to earlier. 
adding and removing programs, or in the newer versions, Vista and Forward, it's called Programs and Features, is where you would add or remove programs, or a utility called msconfig. So let's first show you adding and removing programs. So in XP, it's the last version to be called Add or Remove Programs. And we wait for it to show us the stuff. While it's waiting to do that, I'll kick on over to Windows 7 here and show you something that came about with the advent of Vista and Forward. We'll go to Control Panel. It's in the Category View here. Under Programs, you have Uninstall a Program. But if you were actually in the normal view where you see the names of the control panels, it's called Programs and Features right here. So we'll pick that. This is the newer version of it, and I'll tell you why I like it. Now, I don't have much installed on this one, but you can also, if I had installed more on this machine, we'd be able to do this. You can click the categories here, and it will sort it. You see the triangle is big on top, so it's sorting it by newest to oldest. We only have one item, so it's not as exciting to look at this. And then you can also come in here on this search one, and if I wanted to type in tool, like toolbar, it would show me items matching that, or bar. Anything with tool, bar, or search, I usually think is stupid and needs to be removed, because you don't need it. It's usually bad. So let's go over to the, my main Windows 8 host machine. I minimize the 7 one now, and I'll hit logo key and I to bring up control and settings nice and easy in the control panel and we'll go into programs and features and I've got a lot more on this list so you can actually sort it alphabetically A to Z, Z to A or we can go by installed on date and now the newest is on top versus the oldest so we can see what the most recent things I have installed I try a lot of unique things so lots of lots of stuffies but those are some of the nice things you have going on in the newer versions. The ability to filter, sort by the date it was installed, and there you go. Back over to the XP realm, you will notice that these toolbars are still installed. So I could actually still be needing to go ahead and hit remove, or let them run through their uninstall processes. Sometimes when you hit remove, these programs are so... Some of them are lame. They literally want you to check the box that says, sure, uninstall me. I mean, they'll phrase the question forwards and backwards in an effort to confuse you not to be able to uninstall it correctly. So there you go. Now, you can't sort it by date and other stuff. So if you're looking for a reason why something past XP is nice and new, all versions past XP have those filter tricks and lots of other things that are really good about those newer versions if you haven't moved from XP yet. All right, so you would want to uninstall these things individually. If you weren't aware of what these things were, we'll show you the other option, which is to go to Start and choose Run. If Run is not on, you can hit the Microsoft logo key on your keyboard and tap the letter R, and that will bring it up. So I'll choose Run here, but if you hold Logo and R, it'll bring the same dialog up. We can type in MS... C-O-N-F-I-G, like Microsoft Configuration. And now this comes up. There's two areas we're going to look at here. Startup. So these are all the little trigger fuses that are still enabled to start programs. The reason why I'm looking here is because not everything that gets on your system is mature enough to actually bother to show itself here. If you had a virus or something, you know, really bad, it may not actually be on the formal add remove programs or programs and features with an uninstall that says, please uninstall this nasty virus. So they don't really want you to ever get rid of them. So the trigger fuses in startup to start those viruses might be here. Do you want to just go through on every line item and uncheck them? Some people think, oh yeah, your computer will start faster with all these things unchecked. Well, some of them might be device drivers for your video card. All kinds of things that are connected to your computer that it needs to know how to talk to it best. So if you uncheck those, it actually makes your situation slower and less functional. So you want to know what you're unchecking each time. If you put your mouse cursor in between these column headers, command and location, the command is the path to the executable. So if you're curious about one of these things, Let's go ahead and pick one that looks weird. See this one says program files, search protect, 
bin CLT MGN. Hmm, what's that? Well, we'll set this aside here, moving it up. Double click computer and we'll browse our way to that path. So I'll move it down so we can see that one uh, right here. So we'll go to C, Program Files, Search Protect. I'll tap the letter S and it'll jump down to the S's. Okay, Search Protect. And inside of Search Protect was a bin directory and CLTMGN. CLTMGN. So that's the executable. As I hover over it, you'll notice it gave me some details. Search Protect by Conduit. That was one of those toolbars, the Search Conduit toolbar. If you right click in Executable, you can choose Properties. And there's usually a version tab. Unless it's like, you know, an older 16 bit DOS level program, it might not have the version tab, in which case you have to ask yourself if it doesn't report its version and tell you who it is, is it really good for you? It might be a virus using a low level programming structure. So we'll go to the version tab and you see search conduit. You can get all, all kinds of details about what it is. You can Google or use a search provider you prefer to figure out what this thing is and if everything you're doing to research, what is this one line item I'm about to uncheck? If it, is it good or bad? You should really use that kind of depth of research to know what you're unchecking because you don't want to uncheck good things you want to uncheck all the bad things as I've done this so so many times I have a good instinct about going uh, that's junk 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 <laughs> Java update scheduler yeah we want our Java to be updated because Java is a wonderful technology that many naughty people use to exploit and inject things onto your system but there's many good things that Java does so I'm not going to try and villainize Java Adobe Arm I don't find that needs to run at startup the Acrobat Reader a portion of it is actually starting with your computer so that when you open an Acrobat document a PDF it will open faster uh, who cares you know I mean do you read a PDF every time you boot your computer probably not so this, you know, narcissism that programmers or corporations have to have part of themselves start with your computer, I think is kind of ludicrous. So I uncheck a lot of things and there you go. Now, other devices like you might have a scanner and if you uncheck the module for that scanner, that little convenience button on it that says scan my document or print this or copy this to my computer, those sorts of things won't work, but you got to ask yourself how often I use those sorts of buttons. Your computer will run faster without having all kinds of things sitting there waiting for you to hit a convenience button on a peripheral device like a scanner. iTunes. iTunes will sit there and wait for you to hook up a device. It will also want to take over your you know, media playing experience. And so you could uncheck iTunes and some other stuff like that, but then it might not update itself all the time. So if you really, really love your Apple products, you could leave those things running for your convenience. That's your own judgment call. And there we go. So I unchecked a lot of things. I could hit OK, and those trigger fuses won't be running. We still do need to uninstall some things. So between the configuration utility and what's installed on your system, you can choose to start whittling away and removing the things that are slowing you down and giving your system a direct tune-up. On the configuration utility, msconfig, I'm going to also show you the services tab. This shows you all the services that are running because if we were to bring open the task manager, which you can do quite a few ways, one way I like is to right click on the taskbar and choose task manager and here's the task manager. On the applications tab it only shows we're running three programs at once but in honesty on the processes tab we'll notice there's a lot of other services that are running in the background some of which are beneficial and part of Windows but some of them might be yucky stuff they got on there too. So on the services tab here there's a nice filter where you can check off hide all Microsoft services. Now we have a much smaller list to look at we'll notice that since we still haven't done the formal uninstall, I'll close the task manager so we can see the add and remove programs. Since I haven't done these formal uninstalls yet, they still have services here. You should give the program a chance to remove itself nicely if it does have an uninstall. But if you find that there's still leftovers in here and then you go ahead and research it and say, what's this still doing there? You can uncheck and, and when you uncheck something, 
it disables that service so it won't be starting with your computer then you would hit OK since I did some stuff on the startup tab and the services tab hitting OK will save all those preferences and it, it asks us this question do you want to restart now or exit without restart I'll exit without restart I'll close my stuff. When you reboot, you get one little notification up that'll pop up here for you. So I'm going to shave some time out of this video. Okay, so this is what's going to pop up when you restart your system. I just restarted, but I shaved all that out just to save you the time of having to watch it. System configuration utility, that's from MS Config. And it's saying a lot of nerdy stuff that just says you change something and you check don't show this message again and it won't come up until the next time you actually change something with MS config. We'll hit OK here and there's a lot of things not running. I still haven't gone through the formal uninstalls on add remove programs yet but that's enough of the view. That's just to teach you the concept. It would be boring to actually watch me uninstall all these things manually but you'll be doing that if you're giving yourself a tune-up. So we'll minimize the XP machine and now we're back at the Windows 8 Post here. Now I'm going to show you how different Windows 8's MS config looks. So I'm going to hold the Windows logo key on the keyboard and tap the letter R to bring up run and hit OK. Here's MS config, the system configuration utility inside of Windows 8. Now I've already used it before so it's already showing me that I've done some selective startup stuff. So I'll go to the startup tab and you'll notice that it doesn't show me anything. It says to do this, this has been moved over into the task manager. Oh, 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 so this looks different in Windows 8. We'll, we also still have the services tab and the convenient hide all the Microsoft services. So you can still go through here and disable services nicely, which is cool. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the task manager. Now you can go back to start up here and hit open task manager or that trick I showed you before. I like to right click on the taskbar and choose task manager to bring it up. I'll cancel out of the system configuration utility. It shows me my two virtual machines are running but I can hit more details and I get the more verbose task manager. You'll notice there's a startup tab. I'll go to startup and this shows me all of the individual little things I might have running on startup. You can still do your research on these items. You can right click and hit search online to actually find out about the item. You can open the file location so you don't actually have to do that browse to where it is. Majorly convenient on the way it lets you do this. This incidentally is the touchpad driver for the laptop I'm on and doing the recording here. And voila, here we go. So that's one of your differences on Windows 8. Just thought I'd show you that last difference, but these are all the tools for that I use for tuning up Windows, making informed decisions on unchecking lots and lots of stuff. I hope that was helpful. Thank you.